dear students uh, let's have some discussion uh, regarding the poem new year by leopold sango as we uh, promised today earlier we all are quarantined or isolated this is a necessity we must not avoid it because by running away from precautions we may run into the disease anyway uh, you know new year uh, there are many themes you know obviously a poem would have many themes you have known this and even if they are not in the poem a reading can bring in more and more things to it however uh, we will here restrict ourselves to a very particular area uh, that is new year as a critic of the city you know city life and country life they have been always uh, juxtaposed and uh, ever since the beginning of industrialization sorry there have been a great exodus to the city in the west and in india also raymond williams book is instructive in this regard how this exodus is uh, figured in literature the country and the city uh, anyway that is not exactly what we are talking about today in this new year which is primarily regarded as a poem of uh, you know negritude in fact it is let me check it is collect it it is also published in a volume called uh, the negritude poets an anthology of translations from the french by ellen uh, kennedy originally this was written in french so there are two or three translations i think we are using the one given by uh, the prescribed book recorded in the prescribed book for this course 405 in anyway, uh, so city life what are the things that we associate to it from one point of view progress promise like the american dream you know dollar dream etc and then country life with lack poverty all these things however there is also uh, you know a counterpoint a counter argument which has been running through ages but especially uh, i think revived by the romantic poets romantic poets were poets of nature in also that sense that they wanted to prioritize the country or the nature over the city upcoming industrialization etc so in that tone we regard country with purity freshness lack of artificiality and then city we associate with you know hypocrisy mercenary spirit you know money mindedness lack of life hmm. uh, mechanical things exact i mean excessive mechanization you know that's why Uh, we all say that modern poems are typically poems of the city by modern i here mean actually the modern period of english literature which is sometimes called modernist also though there is a difference between modern and modernist but anyway for the time being we'll regard them as two uh, the, this two as one so modern poetry is poetry of the city eliot you know the imagery that comes in it's not of country but of city but in this uh, poem Sangor has juxtaposed uh, the two images though the name is new york it also talks about harlem you must have been aware from your readings in american literature about the harlem renaissance which is around 270 kilometers from new york very close by so apparently uh, the poem is about you know new york but if when you read deep this is possibly not about new york but more about harlem or a plea for you know recognizing harlem as a legitimate part of new york so if we start uh, i don't remember this poem somehow you know the line so i have to look at it excuse me for that new york at first your beauty confused me and your great long legged golden girls so immediately here gaze uh, theory comes in who is the giving the description obviously a male you know by and large is looking at the girls come first into the picture had it been a 
women than uh, it would have been men though there are exceptions you know non heterosexuals but uh, so far as we know here yeah, the poet is so, uh, heteronormative uh, thing uh, from that point of view talking so long legged golden girl so whenever a typical heterosexual man let us say goes uh, to the city he notices girls uh, you know uh, along with other things that so the very first line that comes in new york's beauty long legged golden girls uh, barbie doll kind of image i was so timid at first under your blue metallic eyes your frosty smile so timid but the laughter that is coming from the girl or from the city there is a conflation between the image of the girl and image of the city here the smile that is coming the looks that are coming you know are frosty metallic no life there that is artificial and then in the disquiet the disquiet in the depth of your skyscraper streets lifting up all eyes in the sun's eclipse skyscrapers the huge tall buildings which are thought to be the heights of achievements of modern architecture what they have done is actually as if they have eclipsed the sun you, you can't uh, have a look at the sun where there are too many skyscrapers even sky is not visible it is not only in new york but we are here in shilchar but in many metropolitan cities in india now it is difficult to have a piece of the sky as we say it act to grow akash you know that is also not visible unless you are on the top floor i mean you go there so no dissociation from nature again wordsworth comes back to our mind uh, what man has made of man so he is amazed as and at the same time he is very critical sangor or the narrator if you like i don't think here it is necessary to maintain the distinction because he is uh, he was a proclaimed uh, poet of negritude etc so the sulfurous lights and all these things all the imagery please note the imagery on your own as i have said my reading of the poem cannot substitute your reading i have given you the leading theme two themes negritude and critic of the city here you can concentrate on the critic of the city and on your own you know keep um, highlighting or collecting the words the symbols the metaphors that talk about the city uh, and then there are further images but a fortnight on the bald sidewalks of manhattan bald sidewalks of manhattan that is no grass no plantation no vegetation baldness is a sign of in this regard a kind of unnatural sickness no child's laughter blossoms his hand in my hand no mother's breast there you cannot hear children's laughter he finds if children's laugh but it is you know not like you would have heard in africa you know as we know he is from africa she is very close to nature or was close to nature when he was writing till now closer to nature than america like in india at least a non metropolitan india so child's laughter doesn't blossom uh, it's very pathetic at this moment i can remember very uh, recent you know occurrences unfortunate ones Uh, outright unfortunate a child uh, born at shilcher when his parents were a four year old child i think he was locked inside the flat because both of the parents are working there was a maid who fire caught and got killed this is an extreme case but even otherwise you know what happens is modern life in city makes both the parents work i'm not saying that uh, men should work and women should stay at home you know it could be opposite or at least grandparents could be there and nothing like that so children artificially brought up uh, very artificially no mother's breast you know even breastfeeding that's why for last couple of years this was written slightly early uh, and then this stage compulsory breastfeeding has been you know proclaimed as the sole right of the child and the mother all over the world but there was a time when working mothers there was no breast milk the artificial milk children you know were made to live on so what is that the very basic thing of our life we are linked to the mother first of all so uh, forget freud and other things but the basic process of life starts from 
along with breathing you know getting milk from the mother that also was dissociated for city life working mothers you know they were uh, even now it continues out of compulsion or out of greed we don't know we cannot be judgmental also in this regard these days are so difficult but this is really unfortunate children deprived of mother's breast uh, legs in nylon you know legs uh, human body part the nylon the symbol of artificial creation industry legs and breasts with no sweat and no smell <laughs> we are you know rather uh, apprehensive i'm uh, very afraid of certain strange kind of smells but actually you know people say it's good that people have some smell of their own because it's natural but you know in city sweat smell etc is not there now in country also deodorant and so many other things so body is dehumanized in an attempt to beautifying it aesthetically and artificially we had in ancient times also such cultures but mostly the things are organic like sandalwood you know chewing pan for mouth freshener etc i'm just trying to draw some analogy between the indian context and the modern indian context that is these days all this kinds of thing kya chal raha hai dash dash chal raha i cannot name commercial things here you know so sweat smell everything not there dehumanized and then uh, no book where wisdom is read that's why this is a poem not only this in literature especially post colonial literature all poems have a message but generally what we study these days no wisdom only bits and parts uh, how you can win how i can win you know how to get a good job how to make more money uh, reach that poor that in different ways mba management different fields e economics you know all are in information we say there is a three tier system information then knowledge then wisdom wisdom is not there that's why corona has come um, in a way uh, i am <laughs> not speaking like a pontiff or priest but you know we have uh, gone severely against nature i have sp spoken in a, an earlier video also this is a result of possibly either uh, very secret and unholy experimentation in biological weapon or eating too much from the nature those species which we are not supposed to so nature is taking its own course whether you talk about coleridge or malthus in economics malthus was a classic economist theorist who said that nature will take its own recourse when there is overpopulation so maybe we don't know but so i'm relating this to the current situation i hope you got my point so everything is artificial now coming from the breastfeeding milk part nylon part the worst part of all is that we all of us have accepted it now it's a very important part of uh, population control uh, that is contraceptive that he is also critiking the line you know with which the first stanza ends uh oh nights of manhattan tormented by fatuous fires while the klaxons cry through the empty hours and dark waters bear away hygienic loves like the bodies of children on a river in flood so actually love is not allowed to even to be uh, consummated so to speak in most of the cases because artificial barriers you remember uh, the wasteland you know if if you don't want children what do you marry for so marriage you know or say physical intimacy or sex let us say was naturally meant to be for procreation but we have made it to be for recreation and all the more in the city so hygienic love just as legs in nylon so you know a lot of binaries are here one from the natural world and one from the city and industry so this is how we can say that it is a very very potent critic of city life now the, in the further parts you know he will show how this is a thesis now there will be an antithesis and then a synthesis 
it's not that every poem has this but this is designed in such a way he was some kind of a marxist also related to the african socialism or the so called african socialism so antithesis is holland where the african american slave almost all the things are directly opposite to the city it is natural though they are you know oppressed tormented as quote unquote negroes but then their entire lifestyle life scheme etc stand in direct opposition to the new york so that is the antithesis part and then synthesis final stanza this is uh, the time of reckoning it is said you know reckoning means new york i say to new york let the black blood flow into your blood so what he is talking about black blood flow into your blood not only cultural mixture as bhava and others have said hybridity in the cultural sense also in the sense of racial mixture mixture you know racial purity is a myth we know today you can compare it to our casteism which for a long time so even now stopping Uh, marriages between castes communities etc so racism was there but he is making a plea for a collective human society which has now come uh, willy nilly we are all you know united against corona corona keeps coming back because like uh, marvel's poem at my back i always hear time swing chariot hurrying near but then you can always relate you know this is just not for fun that i am referring to this you know how we have segregated ourselves from nature at one level and then from fellow human beings at another level both these have to be addressed and i think new york by sanger is a very powerful document which gives us the even solution it does not problematize only it gives the solution which is the term of let the black blood flow into your blood racial mixture we can relate it to sides uh, trope on the re- reading together of canonical and non canonical texts what we we calls contrapuntality okay so this is slightly different from what sanger says from achibian anti racist racism which he by way of quoting sart he advocated in the novelist as teacher also different from abolition of the english department i am going back and forth so it is more like in the spirit of the indian renaissance of aurobindo and tagore not so much of gandhi gandhi was literally became sort of an abrogation is total abrogation of all west if you read him swaraj etc but aurobindo tagore all of them said they were best in western and eastern so we'll accept the maybe technical excellence of the west seems to suggest uh but it should not get priority over human heart so what is important is we should rehumanize ourselves city technology industry all this have dehumanized us here arnold becomes very important if you go back to english literature levis fr levis you would often call this civilization technological bandhamite you know people are dehumanized with card biometric all this now these things are having a kind of backlash due to this corona so uh so there's a lot of possibilities for quite some time now i haven't giving i haven't been giving any organized kind of lecture on anything because that is a kind of prophecy i am not a prophet you know uh, i just point out certain important tropes ideas or even gaps it is for you to construct your things in your own way uh, so thank you very much thank you for listening so remember this read the text on your own and try to highlight the things we had to speak more on the other two sections but uh, this is exactly directly not related to the theme and uh, gradually we may do in another video we'll do right now i focused primarily on the first stanza which is related to that topic um, critic of the city which seems to be very important in today's context thank you very much